Hi, welcome back to SoCal Harvest. Becky Brensinger here. We are here with Andy Minio. Andy, Andy, thank you so much for taking your time tonight. Um, you are going to be singing and doing what you do best tonight. What does that mean to be able to be singing in front of a crowd like this? Oh, this is rad. You know, you get <laughs> it's like you don't you, you call somebody and you're, you're talking with them and they're like, where are you playing tonight? You're like, ah, you know, Anaheim Angels Arena, you know. <laughs> There's no, like, humble way to say it. It's really cool, man. I, it's always a pleasure to be able to just show up, do what I love, and mm -hmm. contribute to an event. So, I'm, yeah, it's tight. Yeah, I'm stoked for you. I know I'm excited to be able to listen to your music. Um, a lot of people on Facebook Live are just like, oh my gosh, Andy Minio! I'm so excited that you're getting to talk to him. Um, so shout out to all the Andy Minio What's fans. Up? What's up? <laughs> so let's talk about what's happening with you musically. Talk about Recurrent and where the next couple steps are for you. Yeah. Um, man, it's been an interesting couple years. Um, creative music and then... Uh, one thing I didn't know is like once you create music and you put it out and people like it, you gotta give them more. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, uh, you know, so I've been in studio and um, a lot. It's interesting. It's hard to make music consistently while you're always traveling and doing shows because now you gotta sustain your business and right. you know you got crew to take care of and you gotta do tours and things. So you try to create in these little windows and it feels like you got to come out with a product so that you can continue to share your music and your art while people you have people's attention so but it's been fun man it's like it's a better problem to have than you know working a job i don't like but um i'm having a lot of fun creating a lot of new things and a lot of stuff is backed up so there's a lot of new content getting ready to come out okay. so i have something early september and then I'm going to try to drop again six weeks after that. Just little projects so I can keep on putting music out mm -hmm. and um, just having fun. Mm -hmm. And to double back on what you were saying about creating those little pockets of time and like creative moments to get your creative juices flowing, what's that look like for you personally as an artist? Yeah. Um, well, for, for me, I think as every artist, like you have to figure out what your workflow is. Right. And I was really encouraged one time to hear a guy say like, man, I've been trying to figure out what my rhythm of uh, being a person and working and creating is. And he's like, I've been trying for 12 years and haven't figured it out. And I was like, oh, thank God. But you start to learn over time how you tick. I found out that I work best in the morning. So I actually like, a lot of rappers like to go in studio at like 3 a.m. and work overnight and dark. I'm like, I hate that. I like to go to bed <laughs> and wake up early. I'm really creative in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to try to get up, work in the morning, create take time for lunch and then I like to go um, play basketball at night get a workout in you know spend time with my wife when she gets home so try to build a rhythm like that when I'm home and off the road um, and then sometimes you do a little lockouts like right after this show I'm gonna stay out here for 10 days and try to finish my next project Sweet. so you know it's just about finding the pockets of time and you got, I got to work with other collaborators so you got to try right. to get all their schedules aligned right. That's and difficult. create but it's fun. Like I said, man, it's the best problem I could have. You yeah. know what I mean? There could be a, a, a lot of other first world problems going yeah, on in our lot, lives, right? It could be a lot worse. <laughs> All right. And then lastly, Andy, um, just share your testimony of how the Lord's transformed your life yeah. and what that was like for you. Because there could be a lot of people out there on Facebook Live that don't know the Lord or even know what the 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 depth of the truth and the word brings to your life. And so it, could you share your experience with Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, man, what I would say, because, like, when you ask somebody that question, you're like, well, how much time do we got, right? Right, yeah. But to say it briefly, man, I became a Christian um, when I was about 13 years old, 14 years old. I'd heard the gospel message, uh, and what that basically meant was, like, Jesus died in order to forgive me. And um, forgiveness being this thing that we all deal with, the sense of morality and that our wrong or our sin or our brokenness is something that separates us from God, something that um, breaks us as people. And man, just like, as I began, that was the first thing that got me intrigued, like a God who forgives you, he comes to you and, right. and comes after you. I just thought that was an intriguing concept. And as I dug more in, I've evolved and changed more as a person who understands my relationship with myself, my relationship with God, my relationship with other people over time differently. And man, just like, as I've, discovered more about who Jesus is I'm just intrigued by this person consistently right. and he always brings me uh, he always awakens things in my heart uh, about forgiveness about loving myself and loving God loving others we got to cut off what? that's what I'm saying well I can't tell you about Jesus this guy's telling me to turn off so 
I love him. It's been an awesome experience. All right. Well, thank you, Andy, for sharing your experience. I appreciate it. We appreciate you. I appreciate you. For sure. Thank you so much, brother.